Welcome back to an ongoing test with the Park West Arms SD10 single shot rifle. If you've been following along now, we've loaded this thing up for an African hunt and had great luck with it. Uh, a few little weird things going on. And I did a video talking about how we all need to really work with our rifles so we know them, not just get one three shot group that goes wowie and then think we're done. We need to see how it works at different distances and different weather conditions and on and on and on. So what I'm doing now is I'm testing the ammo that I brought back, found out that one load did not work all that well. Uh, 160 grain uh, bullets from uh, North Fork that actually performed wonderfully in Africa. I took several, had really big animals with it and just loved the performance. I thought I was getting about an inch and a half group here when I was at home getting loads developed. But once I got back and tried what I had left, I was shooting two inches. So I think this rifle just doesn't like those. But the 101 grain Hammer Hunter bullets uh, were shooting uh, just under an inch before I left for Africa. When I got back and started shooting here, I got an inch 0.3, 1.32 inch group out of it. One went a little bit high. So I'm thinking what might be causing that and there's a chance that the fore-end wood is touching the back or the front of the receiver just a little bit too hard and that might be changing it based on pressures that I'm putting on. And that's another one of the things we need to test of course is how we're hunting with our rifles. We're not shooting them off of bench rests by and large. My wife did once <laughs> right here. Shot a mule deer right up on that hillside from the bench. <laughs> But generally, you're going to be hand-holding, shooting off sticks. Maybe you'll have a tripod. But all of those things have the potential for changing where your bullets are striking and or the accuracy of the rifle. So whether or not your barrel is pressure bedded, um, fully bedded, floated, any number of things you need to test. But you've got to shoot a lot to get familiar with your rifle and really know it. And that's what we are doing here. So what I'm going to do is shoot the last three loads that I had loaded up for Africa right here see how they group and then we've got six more loads that i just built it's the same load same powder primers and everything else but i may change my shooting positions and see if that makes a difference i might shoot off some sticks i might shoot off of these little bull bags up here and that sort of thing so let's just start off now with a clean well it's not a clean barrel same barrel i had last time i shot that three shot group out there but it's cold obviously a couple days later <clears throat> so cold barrel not cold temperatures out here Cold barrel. Boy, how is that for a long introduction, huh? Now, Betsy is going to slide back behind me and get in that spotting scope because she's, she just loves watching bullets hit paper. And she has been telling me to get that spotting scope out here for the last six trips to the range, I think, just so she can do this. <clears throat> oh, I forgot my little chronograph. Well, we chronographed these last time. I'll go get it later. Let me get these first three shots done while the barrel's cooling. I'll get that crony. I got a really nice chronograph now, guys, I need to show you if you didn't see the last show. All right, now I'm gonna go for consistency on where my stock pressure might be. Coming quite a ways back to where the, the stock flattens out and flares out. And because this thing shot so well right toward the center last time, I'm gonna aim for the upper left diamond right at the tip of it. Boy, it looks like it's right where I hit, no? I can't see it. Ha, Betsy on the spotting scope can't even see it. Well, Let's just go for group now. So there's cold barrel shot. Now this is slightly warm barrel shot. Rifle in same position, same hold. Might have pulled that one a little bit to the left. <clears throat> now I want to say to folks listening here, another thing you want to watch for is the movement of your rifle obviously on the bench. A lot of people are telling me I've got to get rid of this setup, this is no good, this tripod, this bag is no good, I need to use bulls bags, probably 10 of them probably need to set the thing in concrete <laughs> but I've always say over the years I've used this setup and I've shot a lot of rifles that would group half inch at 100 yards half MOA 
and some even as low as quarter MOA. And I've done that quite recently with the same setup. That doesn't mean this is an ideal setup, but it's sort of what most of us are going to be testing our rifles with. And I think that's valid. How many of us are going to be setting up with the world's greatest bench rest setup, tripods and everything else when we're out hunting <clears throat> or even long range shooting in the field, anything that replicates field use. And we're just trying to get an idea of how precisely these rifles shoot, not how they're going to win any bench rest competition. <clears throat> Pretty reasonable mild temperature on that barrel. So here's our three shot group. Yeah, I see where that one went high and a little left like I thought I pulled it. Now, you, another thing, guys, I want to tell you is while you're doing this, watch what your crosshair is doing on the target. Because I have a grid, I can see those one-inch grid marks, and I can see my crosshair moving with my heartbeat or any sort of little twitches I might have in my hands. That's why I try to hold quite lightly, often with my thumb just on top so I don't get, get myself putting a grip on it, the old death grip that can really torque the rifle. Now I can say I am moving at least a quarter MOA. <clears throat> I heard a disturbing O. Nine o'clock on a Saturday, the regular crowd shuffles in. On the point of the triangle, hmm. So we're looking at a one, about a 1.5 inch group. Pretty close to the same as the last time, guys. It's really not that different. So I think we determined that this is what the rifle is shooting right now with this load. Can I change things? Let's switch to this bull's bag and see if anything happens better <laughs> that way. This is not a full size bull bag. I'm gonna drop this rifle. Nicely padded, so it might not qualify. I'm sure somebody who's a, a bull's bag aficionado will say, oh my gosh, that's not the right bag, you dork. You can't use that thing, but the idea here is you're enveloping more of the fore end of the rifle and reducing the potential for sliding a little bit left and right. I've had over the years probably three of the really big bull's bags or offshoots thereof and I got rid of them because I rarely used them finding that I was doing just as well with an easier setup and sometimes these things squeeze in and touch the barrel and change things and I don't know but let's give it a try let us see what we've got for stability here <clears throat> ah see it's way too low now and I have to go like this to get it higher, and then it falls off that way. Okay, getting a little closer. Ugh, I am not coming anywhere close to where I need to be to aim and hit that target. I'd have to be way up here. And if I sit on top of it like this, it's actually quite steady. Felt like I was getting off of that tripod. I could shoot that way, but then I'm sure the uh, individuals who think I'm should be using a bull bag like this, we'll say, not the right way to use it, that doesn't count. But again, it's the kind of thing most of us would do, right? You get, you get set up and you go, boy, that's pretty steady, I think I'll take my shots. It's not like leaning over the hood of the truck or anything silly like that, but how many times have we done that? Honestly, I am moving no more with this than I did with the other probably even a little bit less because I've got more surface area under the fore end. But I do not have that lateral control thing going on. That is being done with my hand on the ears back here, on this bag. And it, oh, I've always done that, it's really consistent. Mm-hmm. Boy, I don't know, should I try that or not? Because the other thing I want to do is some modification to the rifle. You know what, I think to satisfy the bull's bag fans, I'm gonna get some planks or something and raise this thing and then use it the way it's supposed to be used. So I'll be right back. Of course, everybody realizes that there are many ways you can test your rifle for precision and accuracy. 
tightening down your scope mounts, making sure everything's tight there, using a scope that you know is sticking and functional properly and all the rest of it. You've got bedding issues and on and on, but generally we start when those things are pretty much solid and you've done it right. You're playing with your ammunition. I could do seeding depth differences here. I could change the grains of powder a little bit, but I think most of us are going to be working with some factory loads. And in that case, about all you can do is change ammunition. Different bullet weight, different brand, different type of bullet. All those things can change your accuracy. I have always had excellent results in accuracy with these hammer bullets. All copper bullets, lathe turned, extremely precise. Um, and I should be getting better accuracy, but perhaps this rifle, this is all it can do. Some rifles are not more accurate than inch and a half or inch or whatever the standard. But I know that I have shot sub MOA three shot group with this once. Again, that doesn't mean it's going to always do that. That's why three shot groups are not the be all end all. So, but I do know now I've shot enough groups at 1.5 and under that I at least that good with this load. I would probably start tweaking seating depth on these. But since these are already set up and ready to go, let's go with switching the shooting technique a little bit here. Do what? You need one of those. Betsy needs one of these. Okay. Hey, Betsy, are you out there? Talk to me. Yeah, I'm on the scope. All right. Got the camera rolling? Yeah. All right, let's see what we can do. Cartouche number one. Where are you shooting? We we'll just go over to the right of the little diamond. And I'm just going to take a careful look at how steady this thing is. You know, that quarter MOA issue I've got is as much parallax as anything. Yeah. Little bit, and there's no parallax adjustment on this scope. It's probably zero to 150 yards. Now the hold is hanging right in there, probably a eighth of an inch better than the previous system. Let's see if the group reflects that. Well, that one felt good. Did I hit the hillside? I might have been at eighth MOA to the right when the trigger broke. It's, That's it's right on that point of that um, triangle at twelve o'clock. Uh, right on top. Uh, I see it. So Straight up. Good, good field so far. Yeah. Guys, that's something else you need to do while you're shooting, of course, is keep your eyes open and watch that target. You're, you're ideally trying to see the bullet fly into the target. Impossible, I know, but you uh, are trying to do that so when that trigger breaks, you should be able to say where your hold was. Had you pulled it off a little left or right, or did it naturally wiggle off just a smidgen left or right? So watch what that crosshair is doing in relation to those grid squares on the target. I'm being very careful to get my eye perfectly in the center of the scope here to eliminate any of that potential parallax issue. That felt just about perfect. Did that, that thing go flying way off to the left? I see a hole out there. Because if that's the case, nine o'clock. Yeah. Um, in the red. Oh, uh, okay. So an inch and a half, I think. We got another inch and a half group. Let's look at this. Okay, I'm gonna look at it. Inch and a half group. That's consistent with what it's been doing. Oh yeah, the first mm -hmm. two. First two are inside of a half inch, and that last one dropped down and out. That's going to be about an inch and a quarter or so out. So 
Again, we're hanging right in here. That's what this particular load with this rifle and this scope and this setup is doing right now. Now, some people are gonna be more than happy with that for hunting purposes. This is not a long range sniping rifle. I probably could live with this. I noticed these bags didn't make a heck of a lot of difference. We still shot within that inch and a half or a little bit less. Um, I probably didn't use these perfectly properly, but I was getting just a good solid hold and that's what we're looking for. So I think what I'm going to do, maybe work on some loads or maybe I'm going to sand this a little bit. No, I do, Ron. What? I shoot two more. Two more. Why would you shoot two more? Because I think you, it's a better group than you had with the system. Okay. Um, I think you're closer. Okay. Betsy wants me to shoot another group with the same setup, really concentrating on using these little bull's bag. Exactly right. Uh, as I said, I felt like I was just right on. That one I may have pulled just a smidgen, but it didn't indicate that down the target either. Um, I think it's wasting bullets and time, but we are going to do it. A lot of people like to shoot five shot groups and then five of those five shot groups and average things out. And that's not a bad way to know what your rifle really is doing. But again, I've got now, prior to going to Africa, three shot group that went 0.8 something. While I was over there, I shot a group on the range and that was just under MOA. Um, over here now I've gotten home and I've got a one and a half, a 1.3, uh, whatever this last one was, these last two. So I'm just right in there pretty consistently. I think that's what I can assume this rifle is going to do for me when I'm hunting. And that is good enough for 300 yard game shots easily. I mean, inch and a half at 100 yards, you just add an inch and a half at, more to that at 200 yards, and then another inch and a half at 300 yards. And you're, I, even at 400 yards, you're well inside of, of a 10 inch or even an 80 inch circle, which is your vital zone on the side of a deer, et cetera, et cetera. So, but most of us like to have a super accurate rifle we can brag about. So we are going to take Betsy's advice, burn up three more rounds, and just see how tightly we can make this stuff punch. All right, I've got the bag touching evenly on both sides. Steady this rifle. I've got the bag sliding back here in the rabbit ears. I am going for the lower left target. I'm not seeing it clearly because I don't have my glasses on. That would be a mistake. Now, I think I've got all of my variables wiped out. I'm not forcing the rifle, I'm lining it up and doing my last little bit of tweaking with this grip on the rabbit ears back here. I can give it a little more or less elevation, a little more or less left to right. Bottom of the diamond. I would say on that shot, it broke when I was on the left edge of the tip of the diamond. <laughs> so I'm not even talking an eighth of an inch off. You're about 11 o'clock in that same red, about an inch from the center on the red. All right. Red square. That shot was 29.76. So far, all of these shots have averaged 29.53.4 about what we did last time. So they're consistent that way. We'll find out what sort of extreme spread we're getting and standard deviation after this. Okay, once again, getting everything in for repeatability. Side to side, looking good. We bring that bag down. Tight into the bench. Gentle hold on the rifle. Might have been a sixteenth of an inch on the right when it broke that time. It's pretty solid. Uh, probably. Probably in the same hole. 
That's what we generally get around here. We could Photoshop it, but... <laughs> Betsy's playing the Photoshop game. <laughs> we'll make this thing. Tell you what, honey, when this is all over, we'll go out and shoot a 25-yard group, and we'll claim that's what we did at 100. Nobody will know. Nice and solid. Here we go. I thought you said we were going to see everything with that spotting scope. A bigger spotting scope? What do you got that one cranked up to? You're only at 30, 35. Yeah. Boy, I sure can't see it with my glasses on. A little bit of heat shimmers bugging me here. I think we got a one whole group. Uh, crank it up a little bit. So there's one right in the bullseye, almost dead center. And I think the other two are touching in the red about an inch above it. So we may have our inch group here, guys. Oh my gosh, we may have done it. We may have done it. <laughs> We'll go out and check it out. Um, but again, the last two were inch and a half, inch and three. Maybe it's me. Maybe it is this new bull's bag system. But the point is, we just want to know what this rifle is capable of doing. And once we've got confidence in that, it's time to get off the bench and practice from field shooting positions. I want to know what this thing does when I shoot off of portable sticks. I want to know what it does if I hold it in my hand and lean my hand over a limb. Um, all the different things that I might run into in the field, is that going to change how this thing impacts, how it point, pr prints its bullets? So we may do more on this rifle later. If I start to play around with it, we'll film some more, and I'll tell you what I did either to change the loads or, as I've been trying to say from time to time, is I just might shave a little bit off of that contact point between the forend and the receiver and see if that helps things a bit. But I know the folks at Park West Arms who build these, especially Ward Dobler, who has been there, gosh, since the 1990s, I think, when I met him, he was working for Dakota Arms. And this is essentially the Dakota rifle, the 10, the Model 10 rifle from Dakota. That company, of course, went um, under when Remington went under, because Remington's parent company owned it at the time. And it was bought by some gentlemen who had to change the name of it for legal reasons, couldn't call it Dakota anymore. So that's why it's Park West Arms, but it's a, a proven beautiful single shot falling block action that is capable of shooting sub MOA. It's the hot, highest quality of materials all the way around, but again, it's obviously not set up for precision long range shooting. The stock isn't designed for bench rest shooting uh, or even really to be used off of a attached bipod or anything like that. But it is such a sweet, light, handy, hunting rifle it just feels outstanding in the field and for me that's what hunting is all about it's why i like lever actions it's why i like a lot of different lightweight comfortable easily handling hunting rifles and if i can get the kind of accuracy that allows me to take my game out to three four hundred yards with consistency and i'm confident with that that's a rifle for me let's go down here and see what that target really looks like all right, I'll take the tape off of the holes that I'd covered up. This was the group I shot the other day. If I can get that tape. I didn't want to mix any holes up just in case, so that was my inch point three group. And now I shot that group, which is none too shabby. And then that group, which is nothing to be ashamed of either. We're gonna measure them in a bit. And then finally, when I super concentrated with that bull's bag approach right there, that is pretty darn nice. Would have been even nicer, obviously, if that third hole had gone right where the other two are touching. But my wife is back to run the camera. Let's do some measuring here, guys. I'm going to go outside edge to outside edge. And we'll double check it with the center and eyeball it and roughly. Yeah, looks like we're going right to about 1.352. And on this one edge to edge gee just about exactly the same guys oh, another 1.5 and then this one edge to edge mm, bottom edge top edge i'll go top edge i can get a pretty good feel for that and i'll look at the middle and yeah, it's coming down to like 1.1 1. 1. 
So pretty close to a one MOA goop right there. But again, as I say, I'm not gonna hesitate to go to hunting with this rifle out to 400 yards with this load. Um, am I gonna play around with it a little bit more? Perhaps, but I don't wanna wear the rifle out just shooting, shooting and shooting groups with that holy grail half MOA kind of stuff that I don't need in a hunting rifle. But that's up to individuals. I'm not gonna wear a barrel out on a 757 Mauser um, by shooting a few hundred more rounds for that kind of work, so I may do it. The important thing for me is feeling confident in that rifle. So I might play a little more with some loads, but then I'm going to get out here with my shooting sticks, shooting off my backpack, all the field positions, and get these kinds of groups at different distances, that minute, a half MOA kind of thing. I'll bet you I'm not going to be missing much game. So this is Ron Spomer. Stay tuned, guys, if you're enjoying this, I don't know what you call it, a journey or a discovery of your rifle kind of a thing. Hang in there and we'll maybe do some more with this rifle and maybe a few others. But we've got plenty more rifles to review, so stay tuned to Ron Spomer Outdoors and let us know if there are any particular rifles you would like to see done or particular techniques like this gentleman suggested on the bull's bag. Um, you know, it does show a little bit of potential for shooting a better group, but not a lot. We'd have to do a heck of a lot more shooting to really determine it. But again, as I said earlier, if it's steady when that shot breaks, steady enough. Thank you.